Hey Venom fans, Venom Man 20 here tonight, and tonight on the table we have a special guest. This is none other than the Russell's Viper, known to be the deadliest snake in India. So this more specifically is the Boya Russelli, or the Western Russell's Viper. You also have your Eastern Russell's Viper, Deboya Siamensis. And how you can actually tell the difference is the spots on the Western, if I'm not getting these backwards, is more uniform, and on the Eastern, they're more sporadic. And these guys are notorious in India. India, the land of one million snake bites. If I read into this right just tonight, I was reading a thing that said that India has finally surpassed one million people dying from snake bites. And this snake kills more people than any other snake in India. And that's just crazy. Now they have a very expansive range, all the way into Myanmar, Sri Lanka, over into the Komodo Islands. This guy actually shares the island with the Komodo dragon. And I find that pretty cool. But let's talk a little bit about this snake and then we'll get a little bit into the venom of this snake and then we'll see if we can get some good close-up shots of this guy. So I absolutely love the pattern of these guys. This guy's still relatively young. I'm going to say he's about two foot. They get about three to four feet on average, about three foot on average. But as babies, they come out relatively small and they actually typically eat lizards. Now, as they get older, they switch over to a rodent diet. Now, as I said earlier, they have a huge expanse, but it's actually quite broken up. And they think, scientists think, that that's from populations of people just wiping them out in certain areas. Now, these guys typically are ambush predators, and they will sit inside one spot waiting for food to come to them because they have very good camouflage. Now, they're also known to go out and move around periodically. And that's a lot of times when they come in conflict with people. They will actually end up in a hut where people are living and sleeping and somebody will roll over on it and boom, we got a bite. Or they will be sitting there in the middle of the path in some leaves trying to wait for a squirrel or whatever it's going to eat and a person will walk up and step on it. So pretty much regardless of what this snake does, he's going to come in conflict with people. Very beautiful snake, very neat. Now from the studies that I have looked at, there was one study done that said that about 80% of all bites come from people having interaction with the snake first. Now, I'm not exactly sure what they mean by the interaction. I don't know if it's like, hey, grabbing my box of Cheerios, holy crap, Russell's Viper, or if it's like, hey, look, a snake, and you're poking it. Now, one common thing to note is that a lot of people get bit thinking that this is a rough-scale boa. Don't be like, oh, look, rough scale boa, these guys, these guys are so cool. Just pick them up and hold them, and next thing you know, you're bit by a Russell's Viper. So, typically, it seems like people are kind of, you know, egging on the bite, but not always. I will say that this snake has a very short trigger. Right now, he seems calm, he seems easy to work with. But if you poke him a couple times, boom, light switch on, he's ready to go. They don't mess around us of that aspect. If I was going to compare it to anything, I would say it's kind of like a puff adder. You know, puff adders are kind of calm at first, but you screw with them very much and they'll become your worst nightmare. Now, what's cool about them is they are a lot like a puff adder. They will huff and puff and make a lot of noise. Like, get away from me, leave me alone. This snake looks a lot like the Palestine Viper also. Uh, the Palestine Viper is actually closely related. It's inside the same genus. Um, as of right now, I do believe there's only two recognized subspecies of this snake, the east and the west. Although they say the ones on the Indonesian islands seem to be quite a bit different. Uh, there is an anti-venom for this snake, and I do believe it was in 2016 down in Costa Rica for the snake from the Sri Lankan locality. Because the snakes on Sri Lanka do not have an anti-venom that works. They were using the mainland anti-venom and having a zero success rate. So therefore, they had to come up with something new, and it seems like the Costa Rican uh, scientists have figured it out, which is pretty awesome. Needless to say, it's going to save a lot of lives, because I do believe on the island of Sri Lanka, they say about 900 people die a year from this snake. So uh, these guys are very toxic, and we can talk about it, because it's, it's a pretty interesting and horrible venom all at the same time. So this snake is extremely toxic. They say it takes about 40 to 70 milligrams of venom to kill your average adult human. Now with that being said, one bite they say will give you about 250 mg of venom, 
uh, not necessarily on average. I do believe that's the maximum yield. But still, it's quite a bit of venom. That will kill you, what, five times over? Let's say it's going to take 50 to kill you, 250. That's five times over. That's not good. I don't want to die five times over. But at the same time, in theory, the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake can kill you about eight times over if you take its maximum yield versus how much it takes to kill. So I wouldn't say that that's the biggest issue. I think it's just the fact that people come in contact with these guys. Uh, they say typically that in India, people get so familiar with the surroundings that they won't even use a flashlight or head torch or anything at night. They'll just go out walking. And if this snake is out moving around, you're gonna step on it. Um, if this guy's out coiled up, you could probably step on it. I mean, with the flashlight, him shuffled down in the leaves, I don't know if you're gonna see him anyway. I mean, he's gonna blend in very well. And uh, I don't think he's gonna give you the chance to step on him and walk away. I think he's gonna show you what he's about. But, so it's very toxic. Not only that, what that venom can actually do to you is pretty horrendous. So first and foremost, if you was to get bit, it's gonna be extreme pain, followed by swelling almost immediately. Within 20 minutes, you're gonna start bleeding out of the gums and you're gonna start peeing blood. Within, I think it's about 30 minutes, your heart rate is gonna decline and so is your blood pressure. And then at this point, it's anybody's guess as to what's gonna to happen to you. you. Could go into septicemia, uh, you could go into kidney failure, uh, you could go into cardiac arrest, um, you could get a horrible bacterial infection from the bite itself. There's just a plethora of things can happen, but none of them are gonna be good. The blisters on the skin are gonna be horrible. Um, the anti-venom, you gotta get the anti-venom. If you don't get the anti-venom, you're probably not gonna make it. So uh, yeah, it's just not a good bite. Now the good part about this is Russell's Viper Venom should be able to be used in many clinical and therapeutic applications. As it is cited in medical and diagnostic applications of snake venom proteomes, that in vitro studies demonstrated that this non-cytotoxic peptide has tremendous potential to dissolve fibrin as well as artificial blood clots, thus activating the future application of this peptide as a thromboliasis agent. In other words, a snake's venom could possibly help us treat cardiovascular diseases and cancer. Now, I did want to mention that this guy is actually a true viper. He is not a pit viper. So if you see those giant, huge nostril dealies, those are nostrils. Weird, I know. He's got a big old nose on him. Not going to tell him. Uh, number one, he doesn't have ears. Number two, really don't want to tick off one of the most toxic snakes on earth. Technically, I guess you're not one of the most toxic, but you are like one of the deadliest. Um, honestly, on scale, I'm not exactly sure where he ranks. I know Saul Scale Viper is deadliest, and then he's somewhere right here. Um, Indian Crate's way up there, and so is uh, Naya Naya, or the uh, Spectacle Cobra is way up there, and then he falls somewhere in there. I always thought he was number two, but as I was reading for this video, I don't know that that's true, but I didn't really find a list anywhere, so with that being said, meh. All I know is they say that over 10,000 people a year die from the snake's bite. So it's one that definitely needs to be taken into consideration. Now, yet again, they say that 80% of bites were from people messing with the snake. I don't know how bad they were messing with it, but if we can leave these snakes alone, that drops it down to 20%. That's not too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and hook him, move him around, see if we can get some good looks at him, because he is a beautiful snake. Really like him, needless to say, but at the same time, I don't want him to go too berserk. So let's see how this goes. Hi. How are you? Now, I know a lot of snake charmers in India that work with these say that these guys move unlike any other snake and they're just so fast and so horrible. I honestly think that a lot of the snake charmers are just so used to working with cobras, which are very predictable for a good snake handler, that they aren't used to working with vipers. Because if you wanted me to, I could sit here and say, well, a Western Diamondback is very unpredictable. Because it is. A Western Diamondback can really throw you for a loop. They can do some very interesting things. So I don't know. That might be it. But these guys' face, their head is so weird. That nose is so... And he's still small. You know, he'll get about three, maybe four feet long. So when he gets full grown, that head will be, that nose is so bulbous. They just look funny. 
I love their look. I really do. They're just such a neat snake. You're so pretty. How are you? You're cool. Don't be moving too fast, because honestly, I, I haven't worked with enough of you. I, I don't know how fast you are. I've seen a couple of you wired up in video, and it's kind of neat. But this is also a very tough snake to pin. Uh, they got very long fangs, and they're very good at moving them around. But uh, just pretty. You are a pretty dude. You are, you are neat. I know you don't like this too much. Look at that. I, I wonder what he's doing there. How he's bobbing his head back and forth. He's not looking for a heat signature because he ain't got heat seeking pits because he's a true viper. But he's just. It's very neat. So, what's cool is actually in the lower elevations, these guys are nocturnal because it's very hot. Up in the higher elevations, these guys are actually diurnal, so they'll actually come out inside the daytime. And uh, it seems as if they move around during moist times like if it starts raining they're more active i don't know that they like the water it might be a hey stop raining on me hey bud how are you you are beautiful hey is that curiosity if you think i'm food dude i'm not food dude i'm you're not getting fed right now chubby <laughs> where are you going so this guy's only probably i don't think he's a yearling i'd say he's probably two years old is my guess so hopefully here in a couple years he'll be ready to breed. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Have a little baby Russell eye. You are pretty. You're not doing anything too crazy yet. I like you. Ooh, hey. The snake charmers say they come back over their body real quick. I'm not sure how true that is. Right there you've seen it first. That's the first time I've ever touched a Russell's Viper. Call me a noob. I don't care. I've never done it before. That was cool. Probably been nicer to do on a larger specimen. So you have a little bit more of a body to read as it comes back over itself. But, eh. Where are you going? What do you think's over there? You are neat. I like you. These guys are kind of rare in captivity nowadays. Um, from my understanding, it's just it's kind of hard to keep the babies alive. Um, I don't know how true that is. Uh, I know a lady that done it, uh, like I think it was last year, and I think she had pretty good success. But that's just what I've heard through the grapevine that it's kind of hard to keep them alive. Um, but yeah, just very neat little snake. Very toxic, very scary. Because even if that bite doesn't kill you, it could do some things to your body that you just don't want your body to do. I don't know about you, but if I wake up peeing blood, I know the night before went horribly wrong. What's up? You ready to go up? You ready to go inside your cage? Okay, let's go do that. Oh, don't be getting springy. Come here. Come here, little dude. You were a little quick. I'll give you that. I appreciate you guys making it this far into the video. I do want to apologize for the buzz that my mic was creating. Uh, my cell phone was just a little bit too close. But if you made it this far, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. And uh, hopefully by Tuesday, we'll have another cool video for you guys to check out. Thanks again. Have a good night.